I think every audio file has this problem. Check out this mess behind my rack. Welcome to my world of crazy. Yes, I'm an audiophile, probably you are too, and probably you have a rack of gear like this. I mean, I used to have two turntables on here. Um, now I've made way for CDs. I've got a CD player, a streamer server, I've got a Hegel amp, some shit amps, a phono stage, another streamer DAC. Um, I've got a Rupert Neve DAC here. I mean, I've got a whole bunch of gear, headphones on the end. I've got records behind me. Like this is just my world and it's probably like your world too. But this is not for everybody. Not everybody wants to mess around with gear, tinker, try different things, switch this with that and have everything separated out. Not everybody wants to engage in the world of audiophile crazy. Things can be different. So what about a hi-fi system that doesn't require a whole bunch of separates in a rack? What if we went for something far more minimal, far less visually and physically intrusive, with far less cable mess in our house? Hands up if you thought I was about to talk about an active speaker. I won't, I won't blame you, I talk about active speakers a lot. Today we're talking about minimalist hi-fi systems that are built around passive loudspeakers. This is the KEF LS50. I've owned a pair of these for the last seven years. Um, nothing says minimalist like white and icy blue. Um, but yeah, this is a passive loudspeaker. So, for minimalists, powering my KEF LS50 loudspeakers I have a single box of ele electronics here. This is the Blue Sound PowerNode 2i. Just one box. So we can forget about vinyl, forget about CDs. This is just a streamer with an amplifier built in. So a streaming amplifier. And we just connect our speakers to it and connect it to the mains, and that is it. That's really it. And then this handles all the streaming and then powers the loudspeakers. So it's a bit like this, a Blue Sound Node 2i, but with an amplifier built in. So everything that's inside here is also inside here. You can see the extra height on the uh, Power Node 2i here. It's a taller device. So if I put them next to each other, you can see this one is a much shorter device than this one because this has the amplifier built in. So for music selection, for playback control, for volume control of the PowerNode 2i, we use the Blue OS app, plus also Rune, Spotify, and because the PowerNode 2i also does AirPlay and it does Bluetooth, we have those options as well. But I'm gonna show you Blue OS, Spotify, and Rune. And what I'm about to show you on a smartphone also translates to a MacBook or a laptop. So we get the Blue OS app from the Google Play Store. If you're on an iPhone, you get it from the Apple App Store. It looks like this, but it doesn't start like this. What this app will do will automatically find the, the Blue Sound device 
on your network and it makes setup an absolute dream. So if you're used to sort of Sonos levels of ease, the Blue Sound family of devices really won't disappoint you in that respect. But anyway, inside the app here, a couple of things to point out. There's Bluetooth, there's the HDMI input. Rune Spotify, I'll talk about those in a minute. Tidal, you can see I've already set up. But if you don't use Tidal, there's a whole other bunch of music services. Amazon Music, Cobras. So basically I'm going to Tidal here, choose some, some of my recent favorites. There's that burial album. My God, this album's amazing. Click play all and that will start playing. And it's that simple. So you can be up and running with music with this system in about 10 minutes. It's super easy to set up, like really easy. I love it for that. The House of Love, Shake and Crawl. This is one of three songs that I used to take um, to hi-fi stores back in the 90s when I was buying new gear. But I don't play Spotify that way. I use the Spotify app and we use Spotify Connect. I'm not gonna go over it, but you can see I'm connected here. One thing I will say though about Spotify Connect with the Blue Sound device here with this PowerNote 2i, it's not gapless. Whereas Tidal inside the app is gapless. And then we can also use Rune. So as you can see, I've got PowerNote 2i set up here. I was playing some air. And obviously because it's Rune, this is gapless. Everything you would want to use to control your Blue Sound device is on your phone. And then by association is on a desktop computer or a MacBook. Also worth mentioning that between the power node 2i here and this node 2i which I normally use in my office upstairs we can have multi-room streaming so fully synced if we want to and we can do that with Rune and with the Blue OS app not with Spotify though so that's quite a useful feature people that are really into high-res audio you're well looked after by the Blue Sound ecosystem so the the power node 2i and the node 2i both do full high res. They also do MQA, yeah, they do MQA. So people are asking, does it do MQA, John? Yeah, yeah, it does, actually. They both do MQA, if that's important to you. So it's a very comprehensive feature set, but there's still more. Now, if you don't want to control everything, every last moment of interaction with this Blue Sound device with your phone, there's this neat little touch panel on top that allows us to do play pause. So that's kind of useful when the phone rings and you just want to stop the music. And then we've got track, next, and previous. And then also extremely useful, volume up and down. And also quite nifty is the three and a half mil headphone socket on the front, which uses the same volume control as the speaker outputs. It's not gonna set the world on fire in terms of power and quality, but it's, you know, it's more than good enough for a pair of headphones like this Meze 99 Classics. Um, yeah, so that I think all bases are covered by this single device. So not only does the Blue Sound box accommodate wired headphones, it also accommodates wireless models like these Bowers & Wilkins PX7. So we, yes, we can stream from our smartphone to the PowerNode 2i, like many streamers we can do that, but this device will also stream outward to these headphones. So I think that's pretty cool as well. So Speaker terminals, here's the Ethernet port. I run this normally using Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi aerials are built inside the chassis. There's a subwoofer out here. Interestingly, there are two analog inputs here and here, which double as Toslink in. So if you wanted to connect to the digital source, you could. And then we've got HDMI arc over here for people who want to connect video systems, things like that. So it's a pretty comprehensive back panel. 
one really useful feature is being able to connect a storage device, a USB storage device full of tunes, and then use the Blue OS app to play those tunes from here, directly from here. So when we plug a USB drive into the back of the um, PowerNode 2i, inside the Blue OS app, we get this USB option appear here. And then if we click that, I've only got one album on here, but I made sure that it was actually a DJ mix because I wanted to check whether or not the app, the streamer, played back gaplessly. And with this Richie Horton album, it does. So these are FLAC files on that USB drive. And yes, they play back gaplessly, which I think is a big win because not many of these solutions do that. This one does. So our PowerNode 2i over there gives us 60 watts per channel of loudspeaker drive. Now you can see the volume slider down the bottom here. I can slide that manually or I can go up and down like this. Now I don't like to listen loud, but I'm operating most of my listening in the lower quarter of the volume slider. And that's true for Spotify and for Rune as well, which means we have plenty of headroom. So there is plenty of gain, plenty of power to drive reasonably inefficient loudspeakers like these Kef LS50. I'd probably not hook this necessarily into my Klipsch. I haven't tried that, I'm sorry, but I'd probably be operating in the, like the, the, the bottom 10%. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. So if you've got really hard to drive speakers or you'd like to listen loud, I don't think you're gonna have a problem even with a fairly modest 60 watts per channel. So when I received this um, PowerNode 2i, I was a little bit, I don't know how to say it really, but I wasn't, I wasn't expecting great things. I'm thinking, okay, well, it's just a, a bit like this, as we've said before, the streamer version, the Node 2i, with a Class D amplifier built in. And I thought, well, my expectations were pretty low. I thought it's gonna sound a little bit hard, maybe a little bit metallic at times. And it absolutely does not. One Standout quality for me using these loudspeakers, the Kefs, is the overall Gestalt is Gestalt? Gestalt. I don't know what you say. How do you say that in German? Gestalt? Gestalt. Gestalt. Okay, so the overall Gestalt, Gestalt is one of high transparency, detail, but not distractingly so. So that recalls the Ray Penta from a couple of weeks ago. Um, you get this sort of finesse delicacy that then teases out some of those smaller ticks and rhythms and hi-hats and things you hear in songs. And so then that led me to think, well, okay, if we didn't have this device and we just had the Node 2i, what amplifier would we add to this to come up to the level of the all-in-one? Now, this all-in-one sells for 900 euros. Just the streamer is 550, so our budget technically is about 350 euros. And I really struggled to think of something, you know, maybe, maybe an NAD amp. Um, maybe, I don't know. But the thing is, when we get back into thinking about other amplifiers to add to a streamer, we're then back into the sort of separate way of thinking about hi-fi, and we're one step closer to crazy town, to having a rack, to having lots of gear, to having lots of cable salad. What I love about this system is it's all in one. So streamer, technically a preamp, power amp, all in one box. Nothing more to add apart from loudspeakers. So I call this a just add loudspeaker system. And this was one of the, the trends that I called out at the end of last year for the previous decade. We're seeing more and more of these just add loudspeaker systems come to market. So NAD make the M10, we've got the uh, name Unity Atom. So those sort of small shoebox amplifiers, but if you can't afford three grand or four grand or whatever those things cost, 900 bucks, 900 euros, this thing is a steal. And I don't say that lightly. I've sat here all week listening to this, nonstop, but I can't help but think that most people starting out 
run up against this wall very early on of, yeah, I want a good hi-fi system, but I don't want it to take over my house or my lounge room. So I think as a starting point, entry level, this is probably the go-to device. I can't think of anything else. Maybe Dead on Heos guys make something similar. I'm very confident this is better than the, uh, the Sonos Connect amp. But if you're looking for a simple hi-fi system that you can just plug and play, get up and running in 10 minutes, have every streaming service that you could probably want available to you in one box and then Bluetooth if you don't, headphones, Bluetooth headphones. So there are options and possibilities for all sorts of connections, all sorts of use cases, living situations, and it sounds absolutely fantastic for the money. I mean, I'm sure if I plugged in even my Hegel H190 back in, it wouldn't sound as good as that, but the H190 is a big box and it doesn't have HDMI arc and it's not rune ready. So, you know, we have to sort of understand that there are always compromises with everything we buy, but this is really for people that are starting out and I think it's a tremendous choice. Um, I'm not gonna say highly recommended, that's such a cliche, I can't recommend it for you, but hopefully this video has given you some insight into whether or not you think that this product might be right for you. So the Blue Sound Power Node 2i is really absolutely for music first audiophiles. People who don't want to engage in format wars, vinyl, CD, blah, no. Just streaming, just one box, everything available so you can just Spotify this, ruin that, Blue OS title that. Music first. <music> So this is what a video looks like without any comparisons. That's because I think with this product, with the PowerNode 2i, Blue Sound are really in a field of one. I can't really think of anything else that would compete with this that would have the small form factor. I mean, it's so small that you can't even see it behind me right now. But I think everybody in the family can use this. And I don't think anybody in the family will object to its small footprint, its size, and the way you use it with smartphone apps, desktop apps. So I guess that really is the epitome of FutureFi for me. This is FutureFi at the entry level in a very, very small package. So if you dig this idea of FutureFi that I keep talking about, then please subscribe to this channel. Um, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching.